So what is visual memory? It's really the mind's eye. It's how the brain remembers what we see. And isn't that amazing? You can remember what you saw yesterday, last week, months ago, years ago, maybe until you're five years old. And how does your brain work? In this definition, it's the relationship between perceptual processing and encoding, storage, and retrieval of neural representations. That's a little tough to remember, so keep that in mind. And think about what happens when you see an image, when you listen to a song, or you watch a video. Take a look at this picture. What's going on in your mind? You're trying to think where and when I've seen that picture, if ever at all. And as amazing as our brains are, you can't quite recall them. That's a very famous singer, Adele, and she was doing an award show. Maybe if you heard her voice, you'd remember her. If you watched a video, you might. So that kind of presents a challenge worth solving with technology. How can we have the perfect memory? I know that when I was young and I had photographic memory, well, maybe I wouldn't have to study. So taking that challenge with technology, what we tried to do is replicate our neural representation in your mind with audio-visual fingerprints. And what we did is we analyzed image, audio, and video data to create a unique signature with only 64 bytes per second of video. That's 260 kilobytes to represent an entire hour in a unique way. So how simple is that? That's exactly like your fingerprint. This can identify you. That's all the information we need. For video, that's all the information we need. Once we have fingerprinting technology, the next step is to try to index all the audio and video streams that we can 24-7, movies, television shows, music, radio. With that, we create this gigantic database of fingerprints, and now we can accept image, audio, and video data instead of text keywords as the way of searching this database. And what's really important is we have to do it quickly, efficiently, and at scale. So what can you do with this technology? Well, one example, and I'm going to try to show you right now, is image to video search. All right. So say right here, I'm looking at a website. This is actually Yahoo Korea, and I'm reading the news. And I'm not really sure if I've seen this image before. But lucky for me, my computer can tell me now. I'm going to click a plugin, and as you turn it on, in that split second, you'll see this play button up here. What we've done is sent this image to a database, searched millions of hours of video, and returned the video, and not only the video, the exact moment in that video where that scene or image is from. Oh, look at him. Wow. All right, so that's the robot you just saw. That's kind of the power of this technology. But what if you take it to the next step? You can take images, search for images, images search for video, like I showed you, audio for, to audio, audio to video, video to video. You have truly, not keyword base, but audio visual search. Imagine what we can do with that. But up until now, I've only talked about indexing TV shows or movies or music. That's just content. What if we take the next step, push the boundaries, record everything that you see or do, record your life, that's live streaming, and we add this technology to it. Isn't that amazing? You'll never forget everything. We can achieve the goal of photographic memory. But is that what we actually want to do? Do we really want to remember everything? Do you have any memories you want to forget about? So as powerful as this technology is, it can be a little bit scary sometimes. And I kind of want to leave and end this presentation with one last thought. If we can do this, what about the eye in the sky? Thank you very much.